To re-love is to reconnect with your old clothes, to enjoy the memories and the stories that you've made together. I think of my clothes as old friends just waiting to come out of the wardrobe and accompany me on new adventures. To re-love is to reinvent, to turn up the volume and the colour on what you already have. To re-love is to reimagine. To re-love is to relive. To re-love means to me to find new ways to love something that you already have. To re-love is to be conscious of where you're buying your clothes from. For me, to re-love is to respect the processes, the people and the planet that have gone into making those garments. To re-love is to be open to the idea of exploring new things outside of the comfort zone that you've created for yourself. To re-love is to buy once and buy well. So for me, to re-love clothing is to keep memories close, to keep history close. To re-love is to create opportunities to rediscover your wardrobe and reconsider the items in it. Re-love means to me to reuse, to rewear, and to recycle. I love having items that, that hold history in them and that make me feel safe and make me feel comfortable, make me feel confident. And there's nothing better than owning a piece of clothing um, that you know is going to serve you well and that you can pass on to somebody else. I tend to keep my clothes for a really long time and I also tend to wear a lot of secondhand and vintage clothes. I was brought up with my mum selling secondhand clothes. As a historian as well and my, my, my interest in the past, it makes sense that I'm drawn to clothes that have a long genealogy. I think it's really important that those items that carry with them memories and emotions get to see the light of day again they remind us of those happy times for me to re-love is to remember it's to have an emotional connection with pieces in your wardrobe it's to hold on to those pieces that you have an emotional connection with and to know that in the future you're going to make more memories in those pieces to re-love is to pass down from generation to generation. To re-love is also to understand that item of clothing um, and to value it, not because it's new and not because it's on trend, but because it's here and in your life. So the piece or item that I have decided to style with this piece today is actually my face it's my makeup it's something that is really personal to me and it's really authentic to me and it's a huge part of my identity and the way that i present myself to the world um but i remember the first time that i was fully content with it and the colors were right and it was just i think the only way that i can describe it is essentially euphoria this t-shirt is about um imperfection being beautiful and this piece is um completely perfect in my eyes but has like this gorgeous fraying and things that I guess in a way could be seen as imperfections and the mismatch of the uh, fabrics that it's all of the things that I guess you could construe as imperfect that makes it so sublime. The piece that I have chosen to wear and style with my Tatum Jones bomber which is amazing is this necklace, which is a piece that I sourced from an artisan in India when I traveled there. I paired this awesome graphics tee. I wanted to give you fancy, but like, cool fancy. <laughs> My mom got me these earrings. And I remember when she first got them for me. I really, really hated them. But no, I love them. 
I've chosen to style this skirt with this top because it reminds me of the 80s. It reminds me of a time when I was full of hope and joy, spent my entire time in clubs, dancing the night away. I absolutely love these jeans. Um, I've decided to style them with this necklace, actually. This necklace has my dad's name on it. My dad was called Manny. I got this made um, especially with his name on just to commemorate him. The piece I've chosen are these trousers. They are a pair of secondhand Yoji Yamamoto trousers. They always remind me of this kind group of dancers, uh, this community who was so kind to a stranger. Today I am wearing a beautiful dress by Tatum Jones. I'm wearing it with a vintage, I, I guess you'd call it a cape look. I've had this piece forever. I've got a bit of a cape habit. It's an ingot, I think it's called, um, and it has all of the Irish hallmarks on it. It um, was given to me by my mom when I graduated from my first degree, from my BA. And although I left Ireland many years ago, I remain very rooted and grounded in my Irishness. I think I've decided to style the two pieces together because I've been living in this during lockdown. And the coat has like a really nice slouchy feel. So I thought the slouchy with the slouchy together was quite nice. The first time I felt really um, empowered in my pregnant body. My bump was visibly showing for the first time and I just felt that connection between my body, my beautiful daughter growing inside of me and the magic of me soon birthing her and bringing a new soul into the world. I'm wearing the most amazing Tatum Jones top styled with mother of pearl trousers and little touches of high street from my lobes to my toes. I would go and see my mum and I would show her this dress and she would be all in love with it and she would say, Noreen, this is one of your more grown up looks. You are not a teenager anymore. If I'm stepping out of lockdown, the people that I'd like to meet would be the whole group of family and friends and all I want to do is party the night away with them. In a bar with live jazz with my London dancer friends, I would walk up to one of them and say, would you like to dance? In a magical world, hopefully soon, I could ease lockdown restrictions and go somewhere. The first place that I would go, I would wear the suit off to my first power meeting. There's nothing more important for me the feeling absolutely powerful in what I'm wearing. Nothing makes me feel more powerful than an amazing garment and outfit and this power suit. These shoulders, these shoulders will seal the deal. I think it would have to be one of my dear friends, Kevin. I'd go and meet him in South London where he lives and I'd flex on people in these with these with these trainers as well. Because that's what me and Kevin do. We like to we like to meet up and we like to flex. <laughs> so I would meet up with him for sure. I would definitely wear this outfit out when the lockdown is over, especially to like a chill session in the park with my friends. I would go to the theatre in whatever form it's going to be in after lockdown and I would do my best to support it. The first person that I would go and see is one of my good friends, Kamaya. We met just before we started secondary school and she's someone who I consider as family. I've worked at the post office earlier because this is my life now. We have to get a little bit, give ourselves a little zhuzh just to do the um, everyday things, I think. I cannot wait to see my family. I know it's cheesy, but I miss them so much. I haven't seen my family. This is probably the longest I haven't seen my family in, well, forever maybe. And I would definitely wear this. I remember thinking, I can't wait for Easter. 
I'm gonna get dressed up. India will wear one of my, India is my daughter, will wear one of my smock dresses that I had as a baby. And I actually really would love to wear this gown for that first time when I go home after, um, after lockdown. I think if I was gonna wear this dress outside of lockdown, I would either wear it to a party, to my auntie's party, because it's her birthday soon. And what I would say to her is, dreams come true. Fashion could be so much more progressive in action. It's time for brands to come forward and do something innovative, step away from that, break the mold and say, actually, I'm not gonna show on schedule. I'm not gonna show in the same format or release lookbooks or even churn out collections in the same way. We need this change. This is gonna be the future of fashion. Fashion could be kinder. I don't think anyone should have to suffer, the environment or any person, for us to express ourselves through clothes. There's an opportunity to be so much more expansive, inclusive, representative of people that are affected by and a part of fashion, which is everyone. Nobody needs to be producing eight collections a year, more intelligent purchasing decisions, less waste. I feel fashion could be so much more open-minded. That idea of waste um, needs to be confronted if the industry is going to move forward into the future in any sort of sustainable, responsible manner. Fashion could be an industry that transformed the livelihoods of people across the globe. If there were practices that were more sustainable, supply chains were more sustainable, it has the power to ha have a huge impact on, on people's livelihoods. I think that the lockdown has shown that we need to readdress our relationship with those that we buy from. I think fashion could be limitless. We've seen the merging of men's and women's, we're seeing more sustainability projects, we're seeing a focus on owning your wardrobe and really utilising it in a new and innovative way. Fashion could be a lot more radical. There needs to be a lot more of a stance in speaking about all the injustices that happen in the world. And it doesn't need to be just seen in one way or for just one type of person. It needs to be seen for all and mainly the marginalized voices. So saying all that, that's why I say fashion could be a lot more radical. I think with regards to racism in particular, I think fashion has a responsibility to hire more, hire better, hire further up so that the voices of so many of our communities that aren't fully heard shine through in the products and the campaigns. And uh, I think there's been a lot of effort around this, but a huge amount more can be done. And I think we all know that we can do better. Fashion could be an inspirational source of progress and education. It could be showcasing women without objectifying them, people of colour without diminishing them. It could be kind, it could be empathic, it could be ethical, it could be slow. Fashion could be the answer instead of part of the problem.